there's been a ton of exciting news around AI hardware that investors need to know about. So let's break down some of the most important stories from the last month and what they mean for our portfolios. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. First up, ARM IPO'd this past week with the stock ticker ARM. ARM's IPO valuation was over $54 billion, making it one of the biggest tech IPOs in recent history. ARM stock started trading at about $51 per share and ended its first day of trading at almost $65 per share or about a $69 billion market cap. And that's a huge markup, considering Nvidia aimed to purchase ARM from SoftBank for about $40 billion not even two years ago. And that raises the question, is ARM worth its current price? ARM is a British chip company whose main business is designing processors and licensing those designs to other chip companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Qualcomm, as well as consumer hardware companies like Amazon, Google, and Apple. ARM processors are designed to be much more energy efficient than x86 processors like the ones made by Intel and AMD. As a result, they can be smaller, lighter, and don't need separate cooling. That's why around 95% of all smartphones use ARM-based processors. In fact, Apple uses the ARM architecture for the processors in almost every product they make, from the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, to the AirPods, Apple Watch, and Apple TV, and the upcoming Apple Vision Pro headset. It's also worth pointing out that big cloud providers like Amazon Web Services and Google are putting ARM-based processors in their data centers as well. AWS expects over 20% of their data center servers to have ARM-based processors in them by 2025, and Google Cloud followed AWS's lead by developing two different ARM-based CPUs for their servers as well. And that's a pretty big deal because the data center market is not only massive, but it's still growing at an exponential rate thanks to all kinds of services moving to the cloud and new types of workloads like AI training and inference. So ARM stock definitely has a lot of growth potential over the long term. But companies like Nvidia, Apple, and Google don't just use ARM's chip designs. They're also big strategic investors in the stock, buying up around $735 million in shares during its market debut and seriously increasing its credibility as a long-term tech investment. But I wouldn't rush into ARM stock just yet especially at its current valuation. I recently came out with a deep dive video that goes over ARM's history and business model, their financials, and most importantly, their deep and troubled relationship with an entity called ARM China, which ARM doesn't directly control. I really recommend you watch that video before buying this stock, so I'll leave a link to it in the top right-hand corner of your screen right now and in the description below as well. That way you're aware of all the biggest risks and rewards that potentially come with this investment. Next up, AMD showed off two new chip designs over the last few weeks, which could take some market share away from Intel, but probably not in the areas that most investors follow. One thing to know about AMD's Zen 4 architecture, which came out about a year ago now, is that it's a big step up over Zen 3 in terms of power efficiency. Specifically, it has about 14% more instructions per clock cycle, 16% more cycles at the same amount of power, and can use about 60% less power for the same performance. What that usually means for data center chips is around two and a half times the performance using the same amount of power. Well, AMD showed off their upcoming Sienna platform at Hot Chips 2023, which is all about getting decent performance, but at very low power. Sienna will have up to 64 cores and draw anywhere from 70 to 225 watts. That makes it perfect for standalone microservers and edge devices. I personally think that the edge device market will see a lot of growth over the next decade especially as self-driving cars, smartphones with built-in inference chips, game consoles with separate chips for AI gain mainstream adoption. And for better or worse, AMD's embedded segment is actually their fastest growing and highest margin business unit. Last quarter, their embedded segment made $1.5 billion in revenue, which is up 16% year over year thanks to solid demand for their embedded chips in a wide variety of markets, including industrial, healthcare, and automotive. And with operating margins north of 50%, I wouldn't be surprised if AMD ended up pivoting away from chips for gaming consoles and PCs to double down on embedded systems in the same way that Nvidia doubled down on GPUs for data centers. Doing that would differentiate AMD from both Nvidia and Intel, and could make them a much more compelling chip company to invest in. By the way, if you want a great app for stock market research and investing, check out Moomoo. This is the best app for comprehensive market data and financial info on individual companies. It's honestly like having a financial analyst in your back pocket. 
If I go to Nvidia's company page, I can see everything from their quarterly earnings to revenue breakdowns and even their operational data, all shown in an easy to understand way. For example, here's a plot of Nvidia's operating earnings per quarter broken down by business segment. This is really important to understand before buying the stock. Look at how fast Nvidia's data center earnings are growing. Not only that, but you can easily see how much Nvidia beat analyst expectations as well as tons of other historical data, important financial metrics, and forecasts all in one convenient place. This app is a total game changer for finding great companies and investing at great prices. And if you sign up right now, you can get up to 16 free stocks, including a share of Tesla or Google. All you need to do is download the app using my link, keep your funds at the right level for at least 60 days, and enjoy your free stocks. But this offer ends soon, so make sure to get started today. All right, the other big piece of news for AMD here is that they're preparing their first hybrid accelerated processing units, or APUs, for budget laptops. While the budget laptop market may not exactly be one that investors care about, the trends here are actually pretty interesting. These AMD Phoenix chips combine a general purpose CPU with an integrated GPU on a single die, which makes them a good option for handling every kind of task a laptop could throw at them, from basic computing to rendering graphics. They have two full Zen 4 cores for more compute intensive tasks and four Zen 4 C cores, which are designed for efficiency with lower power consumption. The first trend I want to call out here is that the chip industry is moving toward hybrid designs with different kinds of cores to balance performance and efficiency. We're seeing the same kind of hybrid design in Intel's Alder Lake and Raptor Lake CPUs, which have P cores for performance and E cores for less resource intensive tasks and apps that are idling in the background. But the second trend worth calling out here is integrating CPUs and GPUs on a single chip. This isn't the first time that we've seen integrated graphics on processors, and I wouldn't be surprised if these APUs were finally good enough to compete with lower-end discrete GPUs, which actually make up the bulk of the PC gaming market. These APUs could help AMD capture more of the budget gaming market share before making APUs for a wide variety of other applications, just like they've done with their CPU and GPU architectures in the past. So long story short, AMD's power efficient Sienna platform and this hybrid APU could mark a big shift in the kinds of chips that they're coming out with and the markets that they'll try to capture. I'm excited to see how they perform over the next few quarters. But since this news roundup is all about adding value to investors that are interested in chip stocks, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. AMD's data center revenues are down by 11% year over year, and their operating margins for this business unit fell by almost two thirds due to lower demand for their server CPUs and an increase in spend on research and development. My guess is that a lot of that R&D spend is focused on the MI300A and MI300X generative AI accelerators that AMD announced earlier this summer to compete with Nvidia's H100s. These server GPUs are slated to launch by the end of the year, but I think that Nvidia's GPU lead is only going to grow. That's because Nvidia is about to release a piece of software called Tensor RT LLM, which will roughly double the performance of large language models on their H100 GPUs without needing to retrain the models. This update would make Nvidia's H100s outperform their previous generation 8100s by a factor of eight which shows just how big of a leap Nvidia can make between generations of their own data center hardware. One of the big features that this software brings to the table is a scheduling technique called in-flight batching, which takes advantage of the fact that text generation can be broken down into multiple subtasks that can be run in parallel. So instead of waiting for every task from one request to finish before starting the next, these GPUs will be able to process new subtasks as they come in, even if they're not part of the same initial job. Nvidia's new software comes with this scheduler, optimizations for each of these steps, and fully optimized versions of popular large language models like Llama 2, GPT-3, Falcon, Mosaic, and dozens of others that will work with the software on day one. Tensor RT LLM will be integrated into Nvidia's Nemo framework, which is part of Nvidia AI Enterprise. So this is something customers would have to choose to live without if they want to go with AMD's solutions instead. In fact, Tesla has a new $300 million supercomputer that's made up of 10,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. This supercomputer is about 10% faster than Leonardo, which is currently the world's fourth highest performing supercomputer. And this one is completely separate from the more than a billion dollars that Tesla has invested in Dojo, 
which is built using their custom designed chips optimized for processing the mountains of video data that's coming from the Tesla fleet for full self-driving. And the result here is pretty clear. Tesla will be the first company to crack fully autonomous navigation at scale, not just because of their massive lead over other automakers in terms of data or supercomputing power, but because of the radical change they just made in how they're solving this problem in the first place. A couple weeks ago, Elon Musk released a 45 minute live stream of him riding in a Tesla that's running FSD version 12, which is very different from what Tesla has shown us in previous AI days. Previous versions of Tesla's FSD software had explicit rules coded into it for things like stopping the car at a stop sign, always staying between lane markers, and so on. There are probably hundreds of thousands of lines of code dedicated to applying each one of these rules to a wide variety of scenarios. But FSD 12 is a fully neural network based approach that teaches itself to drive by learning on billions of frames of video of how humans actually do it. Just like ChatGPT trained itself to generate answers by processing billions of lines of human generated text. This is actually a massive difference because FSD 11 will try to obey every rule of the road while FSD 12 actually drives like a human. Think about all of the times that you rolled through a stop sign to avoid confusion at an intersection or crossed a solid lane marker as traffic changed in front of you. This new update lets Tesla's AI decide the safest and most efficient path using the same logic as we do, instead of forcibly following the rules of the road, even when that could lead to the most dangerous outcome. But here's the real kicker. This is generative AI. So Tesla's already insane lead just got much bigger because other automakers can't close the gap simply by coding better rules or relying on more sensors. If they want to train their own models this way, they would need millions and millions of video clips and data from other sensors they use, like radar or lidar. Tesla has another huge advantage simply by only using cameras. And Tesla already has billions and billions of miles of proprietary video data, showing how humans handle the most complex road situations. So Tesla's huge investments in supercomputing, their massive data advantage, and their ability to shift from a hard-coded rules-based approach to a generative AI model have put them in the unique position to solve full self-driving in a way that their competition simply can't. And now Tesla gets to benefit from this entire wave of AI hardware and software innovation, which has been focused purely on generative AI, all while their competition manually labels data and writes code based on the rules of the road. With FSD 12, Tesla has become one of the most important generative AI companies on the planet. And if this doesn't convince you that generative AI is changing absolutely everything, I don't know what will. But there's one more massive AI breakthrough that you need to know about. So make sure to check out this episode next. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching. And until next time, this is ticker symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.